I'm gonna buy me a new phone been. since I've been using it for this for three months. Good morning, take two. We have people on. Hopefully this is working. Get some thumbs up or comments. I would be really sad if this doesn't work. This is going to be an awesome keeper chat. Yay! Tegan, is it working? All right, let's start over. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carrie and I am joined out here in one of our outdoor primate exhibits with one of our keepers, Carrie, and our zoo director, Keith, who's going to introduce us to this awesome species of primates that we have out here. So I'm going to turn it over to Keith while we know it's working. Who's going to tell you more about these these guys? So we're here, well, we're, right now we're in what we call our outdoor rainforest exhibit. Um, we opened up Rainforest Rivers and Leaves in July 2017. Um, and many people have been through and seen the amazing habitats we created inside. Um, we have also created a very elaborate shoot system that allows the primates to not only enjoy the inside habitats, but we have um, access to the outside habitat seasonally and since we got a beautiful 60 degree day that's sunny today um, we have our gelbies monkeys out uh, have our gelbies monkeys out on um, out in this habitat today as well um, we have this species of monkeys a vulnerable species from the western amazon sections of brazil down through um, bolivia um, and it is a very unique species. Um, it is the largest group of primates we have here at the zoo. How many do we have in this group right now, Karen? We have a family group of eight. So we have mother, father, and six offspring. Um, this is probably, actually this is the largest family group of Geldies monkeys in the country, in any zoo in the country right now. This is an incredibly large group. Mom's youngest baby right now is about five months of age, and she's likely pregnant. Do we have an estimate when she's gonna give birth again? Oh, she's in July. So she should be giving birth in the next two, two months or so, um, six weeks to eight weeks. Grow in this group even further, but this is a great species of primate. Great, so as always, if you guys have questions about this species or for the director or about primates, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit about why we have such a large group? What is the reasoning there? So these guys live in an extended family group. So basically what happens is the mother and the father, they have offspring. With Geldy's monkeys, it is a single baby that is born at a time. Um, they are in a family called the Calatricids, um, also called Calatricidae, and they're the only species that regularly only has one birth. Usually it's twins or more that are born with Calatricids. These guys are fairly unique in that they only give birth to a single young. Um, part of the group process is that the kids in the group, they stay with the family group for several years. And it's very important because they learn how to raise their own families by learning with their offspring. So in addition to mom and dad carrying around the babies when they're young, the kids in the group also take turns carrying around the babies as well. We just happen to have a very successful group here. We have a lot of experience with these types of monkeys here at the Buttonwood Park Zoo. And we just have had great success, um, one, because of the habitats we've created and the expertise we have on staff and also because we just got a great group of um, monkeys and great parents for this species. Now how long would their offspring stay with them before they'll eventually move on? Usually they're going to wait until they're about sexual maturity. That's going to be about four or five years of age, a little bit beyond sexual maturity, but typically even in a wild setting they're going to stay four to five years. In a zoological setting, once they get to a certain age, um, Periodically, we will send some of these offspring out to other zoos to set pairs. We said Rain, is that who we sent out? Yeah. Rain was a female that we had here, a female offspring. Uh, she's now in an accredited zoo in Michigan and has been paired off. So this is how it works here. Um, they're part of a genetic breeding program that is organized throughout the country. Um, and we've had great success with them and we're very proud of the species. Now it's hard to tell in a video, but how big would you say they are? I know we're trying to see with they Carrie's the hand here. Body size of about a squirrel. They are a jet black um, animal. Um, it's difficult to see their face just because their face is so black, but they have great expressions. They do a lot with their calls. You can hear their chattering um, as a family group. Um, they stick their tongue out at us a lot, um, but they are um, about the size of a squirrel. 
and yes, we should say these little noises you're hearing are not birds. Those are actually the Geldi's monkeys. Do they have a language like other primates? It's a it's a different type of communication. So there's a, there's a lot of studies that goes on there. So there's different types of communication. They have calls to keep the social dynamic, the group in check. They have calls they'll use when one of the family member gets too far away. They have a bunch of alarm calls, and there are different alarm calls. Alarm calls is where one member of the group sees something dangerous or something as a threat and makes an alarm call to let everybody else in the group knows. Well, they have different calls for a aerial predator like a hawk or an eagle above. They may have a different call for a snake. They may have a different call for some conflict with another monkey. So there is a quite extensive language with these guys. And Logan, age eight, is wondering what they eat in the wild, but also what are you feeding them right now? So we're doing a combination of things right now where Carrie is spoiling them rotten and she's mm -hmm. giving them some grapes mm -hmm. and some super worms, which are types of mealworms right now. In the wild, they have a combination of fruits and vegetables, but also a lot of insect matter as well. Some protein matter, some small birds, possibly small mammals, lizards, but they do eat a lot of insects as well. And can you talk a little bit about um, their natural habitat, where they're from, and, and how they're doing in the wild? They're a western Amazonian species. Um, they are found in the mid-levels of the forest. They usually are anywhere from 10 to 15 feet off the ground. Typically, they live in the mid-levels. They're not all the way up in the canopy or by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, their numbers in the wild, they're not doing great. They are a vulnerable species that continues to decline and there's a variety of reasons for that. Most notably it has to do with habitat destruction in the Amazon forest and also because of um, pet trade influence where people are poaching and hunting primates for the pet trade as well. And would you say noises we're hearing right now are more of a happy noise about the extra treats or because we're in here? I think it initially started because of our Wi-Fi issues. They were just as frustrated as we were. <laughs> um, they were like, give us some treats and they were yelling at Carrie to get, get going on handing out the treats. Now it's a combination of excitement and there's a little bit of sibling bickering, if you will. They're saying, no, I want that treat. No, I want that treat. So there is um, a social hierarchy even within the family group. Here's Although mom and dad are the dominant in this group, um, there is a social hierarchy. There was a good shot of their face. Hopefully you saw that. Um, Tegan wants to know if they ever swim. Any animal that lives along the Amazon River and has the seasonal flooding and seasonal wet season better know how to swim or they're not going to survive very long. The question is, can they swim? Absolutely. If they fall into the water, they can swim. Do they swim? No. That is not something they are designed to do. It's not something they are absolutely miserable when they get wet. Um, but if they were to fall in the water, they can swim. But that is not a place that they will normally be found or behavior they normally would be doing. And what we're seeing right now with them jumping around and being very active, is that something you would see them do in the wild? It's a combination. They, um, Since you have a bunch of toddlers in this group, they are very... Um, active group to begin with and because it's such a large family group there's always something going on. Um, you can combine the fact that it carries them all these uh, sugary treats in the form of grapes and mealworms. And when I say sugary, it's sugary in the context of a monkey. Um, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the fruits we have um, in our country have been modified from their natural form to appease the palate of humans, particularly Americans. So. Um, sometimes the grapes are incredibly sweet compared to what they would eat in the wild, so they get very excited as well. So you just got some rambunctious toddlers running around right now. Um, do you want to just talk about this exhibit a little bit and maybe what we have in here? So this is a combination exhibit. Um, because of the rotation nature of rainforest rivers and reefs with the shoot systems, not only um, are we ro able to rotate the Geldi's monkeys in here, we can rotate all the species of monkeys that we have at rainforest rivers and reefs in here. Because this is a seasonal exhibit, we do have animals who live in this habitat year round. Most notably, we have a lot of duck species in here who are much more cold hardy than the tropical primate species. So they live in here year round, even out here during the winter. And we also have a Cabot's trigopan pheasant. He is last year's offspring of the endangered, um, excuse me, vulnerable species that we have here at the zoo. Oh, he's over there. One of the things is very interesting about Gelby's monkeys is their reproduction. So a lot of people ask us, how do you prevent, if it's such a large family group, how do you prevent inbreeding or animals breeding who should not breed? They have a very unique situation with regard to Gelby's monkeys. There is two different types of what we call suppression. So basically it means that only mom and dad are the ones in the group. 
With regard to the boys in the group, the reason they don't have any type of breeding behavior is because the male behaviorally suppresses. He basically keeps everybody in line. If anybody gets out of line, the male steps in and that's not going to happen. What's very interesting in the female is that we have hormonal suppression. What that basically means is that she sends out hormones that actually prevents the females from coming into estrus, the other females from coming into estrus and being able to breed. If this social dynam dynamic were to break up and you didn't have mom and dad in the group, you would have all kinds of problems here. But as long as you have that strong social group, social family group going, um, everything stays in check and the family stays very strong together. Excellent. So if anyone has any last questions that you'd like to put into the comments, feel free to do that. Another very unique thing about Gelly's mom, because I'll talk to you, Carrie keeps trying to get me out. But every when I do the talks, how come they always end, end, end at 15 minutes? <laughs> that's not true. You, you do fish that's talks with true. Kyle, and that's about 45, 50 <laughs> minutes. Anyway, uh, well, another thing interesting about them, they are unique on the calatrichids is that their teeth, they have, more t they have less teeth than most calatrichids. Is that right? I'm thinking for a second. Yes, they have less teeth than more calatrichids. They're going to break. Uh, whereas most calatrichids and most new world primates have 36 teeth, these guys have 34 teeth. Uh, they have two less teeth. So that is one of the interesting things about these guys and combined with the fact that they have singular birth. All right, we had a question about um, their jumping abilities. Are they, how far can they jump? Why are they so good at jumping? They live in the, they live in the forest, which is full of trees and vines and all kinds of good stuff. So they're incredible jumpers. Um, people look at their tail and they go, can they hang from the tail? No, that is not a prehensile tail. Um, they cannot hang from the tail, but having a long tail like that is incredibly valuable for balance, particularly when they are jumping from branch to branch. They're just designed for a tree environment. They rarely go to the ground. They never go to the ground in the wild. So this is something that they are doing. That do very well here in this habitat. And again, with all these uh, rambunctious juveniles and uh, toddlers in here, they are jumping up. If you notice the slowing down, that's because the bellies are getting full. For all you <laughs> children out there, think about eating a big meal and then trying to go jump around. You get kind of tired after a while. Uh, we had a question, Carrie, maybe you can answer. Do they have a favorite keeper? Um, I don't think so. Like most of our animals, um, I think uh, whoever has their favorite treat is their favorite for that particular moment. Um, these guys do like their fruits, so they love their grapes. Um, they also do like, usually like insects as well. How, how much do they weigh? Um, I weighed Ava today. She's is, um, pregnant. She's a little bit bigger, but she's almost 600 grams. Um, the other guys are probably about 450 grams. And our smallest one, um, who I also weighed today, uh, weighs about 250 grams. Do you want to talk a little bit about the training you do with a species like this? Um, And we had a question about the siblings. Do they get along? Is there a point where they will stop getting along? They get along um, like any siblings, especially during quarantine. Um, there's some fighting, there's some bickering. Um, usually they get along. There is a social dominance within the family group where in addition to the parents who are the dominant animals in the group, there is a hierarchy with among the offspring. Sometimes it's based on being older, some of it's based on being um, males compared to females, but there is a social hierarchy, so in the most part, they do well. As a keeper, you need to know the personalities of every one of your animals, um, and Carrie knows the personalities of all eight Geldies monkeys here, and there are some that you have to pay extra special attention to because they are not going to get food as readily, the other one's going to push them out of the way. And sometimes you have a bullying big older brother or older sister, and that's just guys and we're very cognizant of that with regard to um, our care so Carrie makes sure she takes special attention to those less dominant species within the group or less dominant animals uh, among the species. Now their coloring is very different than a lot of other new world primates. What is the 
the reasoning for their very dark fur and their dark eyes? It has to do with just the different types of camouflage. Um, because of where they are, they're going to be in the mid um, sections of the forest. It's a very shaded area. A lot of the sunlight does not come down from the top just because of the, how thick the canopy is in the forest. Um, it actually all works as camouflage. The thickness of the coat is directly related to protect them from bugs and a lot of biting insects um, in the Amazon forest or in rainforest. Um, but the coat itself, they actually blend in very well in those mid-levels of the forest because they are so dark and they hide very well. Excellent. Now I've read some information about these guys that their diet changes seasonally depending on what's growing in the forest, which is kind of unique for them. Um, it is unique for them, but it's um, from a survival standpoint, you see a lot of different species who have varying have very is readily available. Um, primates, particularly down in the Amazon with your wet season and your dry season, although there are insects being hatched at certain times, but for the most part, um, they are going. They have a series of different types of fruits and vegetables they eat, and those plants and those fruits um, bloom at various times. So they will change their diet throughout the year based on what's blooming at any particular time of year. Looks like our Wi-Fi issues may be acting up again I'm trying to get me off the call 100 right percent yep <laughs> um, but we have also answered lots of good questions here Chris thank you so much for your donation we really appreciate your support in keeping our education conservation mission alive uh, we want to thank you all for joining us we apologize that there's been some Wi-Fi issues today hopefully you got a really good look at this amazing species uh, the Geldies monkeys and we hope that you'll be able to come see them very soon here at the zoo um, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, um, with some better Wi-Fi. So thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, monkeys.